I, I noticed I've been watching the YouTube version of this. Me Would too. I've been watching more videos. Yeah, yeah, the video version is the way to go, it's I better. think. It's so subscribe on the on the YouTubes and uh, look below. You'll find a click somewhere. And I've been noticing I need to I need to get some new getups because I look the same in all the shots. I notice the same thing every day. I wear every time we've done sequism. I have like this gray crew neck, a blue crew neck, and a vest. Yes, that's it. That's and then you've are... been recently a lot in the blazer, blazer, and the and the and the scarf, the scarf. So I need some <laughs> new outfits. Please write in. Let us know. Tweet at me. Send me a little note. Tell me what kind of what kind of outfit should I be wearing for this to to rouse it up. So I want to talk today on Seeking Wisdom. I okay. want to talk to you about mindset. Mm -hmm. Mindset. Mm. Because I think we have not talked about mindset in a while. And yeah. I'm recently experiencing something with mindset that I want to talk you through. Oh, I want to hear about okay? it. Okay? So we're going to talk about mindset. Okay. And we're going to dig in the crates a bit. There's a couple old topics in here. Um, by the way, I switched to just like this, this like uh, what's going on? This high spiral. school looking yeah. spiral notebook that I found in my house, and I love it. Yeah, it feels very like raw. Yeah, you know, we're just like writing. I think some it stuff. looks better that way. You do. You can open it flat. Yeah, you can open it flat. Yeah. So I'm in this book right now. Annie draws in it sometimes. There's some stuff in the. <laughs> there's some crayons and oh, stuff in the back. That. So That's why he likes. Oh, it. she definitely didn't draw that. I know. Um, but she's a protege. She's a protege. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about mindset. Here's what I want to talk about mindset. Right now, mm -hmm. we are behind the scenes working on a little crazy project okay. that we're going to be working on. I'm not telling oh, anybody okay, what okay, it okay. is, not okay. even giving like a hint of a tease, mm -hmm. but you know what mm -hmm. it is, okay? Mm -hmm. And when I laid it out for the whole team, everybody was like, oh boy. <laughs> He's giggling because it's true. G2's giggling right now. You can't see it. You can't hear him. <laughs> Uh, oh boy, like, that's awesome. How are we ever, oh my God, this is gonna be so much This is work. so cool. This hill is so big to This climb. is amazing. This is amazing, right? No, no, you're, not, you're saying different words no, than I am. Nobody said it's amazing. Nobody said it's amazing. No. G2 did text me over the weekend and said I'm, I'm super excited, but it takes a little while to marinate. Yeah, yeah, but was, They were stunned? Stunned. And, and is that I right, think, G2? Look at G2 sweating. The reason bit. I want to talk about this is because I think a earlier version of, of me mm -hmm. would have thought the same thing. Yeah. But I've learned this lesson from being here mm -hmm. and, and through you setting crazy ass goals. And I want to talk about that because yeah. the, the, the kind, and then I recorded a video for the team. I said, the next day I slept on, I said, okay, look, I realize everybody's freaked out, but I want to explain this mm -hmm. because I want to explain that if we let the fear of how big this thing is going to be, we will never ever get started. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, you can use this analogy for everything we've done at Drift, right? Mm -hmm. Think back to where we were a year ago or two years ago, yep. right? If you looked at the goals for that year, you, you know, you, you always unveil the company goals. And if everybody there was just, par I think too often people get paralyzed by where you have to go, yes. as opposed to taking the next step. Mm -hmm. And the analogy I said, like, I said, everybody is worried about what's gonna happen on mile 24 of the marathon mm -hmm. when we haven't even run mile one yet. Totally. And I didn't used to think that way, and I wanted to like you to share some wisdom on on how you get yourself to think that way. Mm -hmm. mm, I love that, and I think I can't it's related that people, to like people weren't excited and weren't like thinking it was awesome. Yeah. And weren't just like high fiving in the room. <laughs> we like, can't wait. Oh, let's do it. Uh -huh. They were stunned. Stunned. Yeah. It's 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 typical, right? It's to be expected. I think mindset super important thing. I think we've talked about a long in the early early episodes. We talked about a book called Mindset mm. by Carol Dweck. Good book, a little hard to get through, but it's a good book. Uh, but mindset is so important, and so that's why we do things like when we set these big, hairy, audacious goals, EHAGs, uh, like you just gave them. Uh, it's important for the people to come in with the right growth mindset, right, and think about how do we, how would we do it? Suspend disbelief for a second. How would we do it? And too often we get caught up on. Oh, I don't have the right thing. I don't have the right setup. I don't have the right climbing gear. I don't have the right thing. I, you know, I can't do it. You know, like I can't, I can't, I can't. Instead, you got to turn that mindset around to like having this, like, how can I do it? How could we do it? How could we do yeah, it? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's start from, let's start from scratch. Let's, uh, let's assume, let's suspend disbelief. Let's assume that we have, um, we can start from scratch, that we have infinite, uh, infinite resources. How would we do it? Now, if we constrain it, how would we do it? And that's how all the great things that, any of us achieved and that we've achieved so far in these early days so far have come from 
suspending Suspen- disbelief. So I wrote down I wrote down three things. I wrote down growth mindset. Mm-hmm. I wrote down suspending disbelief, and I wrote down abundance versus scarcity. Ooh, because I think that's ooh, kind ooh, of the, the yeah. over that that fits right in in mm-hmm. both of those mm-hmm. things. What is? Can you re-explain abundance versus scarcity? This is where yeah. we want to rewind. You go back. There'll be a clip. Abundance yeah. versus scarcity yeah, yeah, for you. Play OGs, clip here. But. Okay, scarcity, scarcity. Come on. You right. could do a, you could do an hour. You could yeah. do it. How many texts have you sent me in my life about scarcity? Scarcity. Everyone forgets the scarcity yeah. part. So again, a perfect example of this. Go to Amazon. Go to a product listing page. And often on that product listing page, you'll see a little thing that's under right at the top. And you know what that little thing says? It says, only two left. Mm. We'll, we'll be getting more. We'll get more next week. But two, two items are left. And, uh, and what that triggers in you is that they're going to run out. So, but they hit you with another thing. They don't, it's not misleading. It's not saying, I'm never going to get any of these. We're going to get more next week. But if you want this this week, uh, we only have two left. Yeah, if you want it in your house by Saturday, you better, you better get it now. Exactly. And then they trigger it again one other way, which is if you order in the next one hour, we can have this to you by tomorrow. Mm. Right? And if you order two hours later, it's going to take two days. Urgency and scarcity Urgency in one and scarcity bucket together. So, but what what I learned from this, and then and then the thing about how we apply this is, he says that the law. It's actually the thing with scarcity is the loss is more powerful than the gain. Mm-hmm. It's people loss cite, yeah. What we miss out on the potential loss is what drives the behavior. Mm-hmm. Not that I have to get this so bad, yeah. but oh my god, I'm gonna miss out. Am I gonna miss out on this if I don't get it? Uh, yeah, we did an abundance versus scarcity mindset podcast must have been one of the really first ones and it's about having you know what do you want your default your mindset towards you can default your mindset towards this idea of scarcity Mm. that things are always going to run out that you can't share things because you can't share something because it's a zero-sum game uh, that if you share something with someone else then that means nothing will be left for you uh, versus coming into things and thinking about it from an abundance standpoint and saying like the more I give, 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 occasionally someone will return, right? I won't even ask. They will give back, right? Because I have this abundance mindset. Instead, the more that you put into the world, out into the world or out, the more you're going to get back, right? It's like this thing that you always hear, uh, which I totally believe, like um, when it comes to giving, giving, right? Let's say it's giving money, giving resources, right? Donations. Uh, you a lot of times you have a scarcity mindset and you think like hey I don't have you know I can't give away 10% or yeah. 5% or this amount because that means less for me and the thing that you'll hear from everyone including myself who uh, uh, tries to focus a lot on giving uh, in this case in a philanthropic standpoint is somehow some way the more you give the more you get back yeah I don't know how that works in the universe but um, it works. It's every like time. DC buys me lunch like three, five, three out of five days a week, and look at what you get. Exactly, right? <laughs> get all this. Exactly. I don't have to worry no. about lunch. No. Okay, back. so I yeah. love that you took it there because I wrote down something from from one of my favorite lessons around this is yeah. a great book, Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness, Jim mm-hmm. Rohn. Mm-hmm. Who Jim mm-hmm. Rohn? We've talked mm-hmm. at length about Jim Rohn on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins' original mentor. Yes. Okay. And in that book, mm-hmm. Jim Rohn said something. He's talking about basically a guy who doesn't have a lot of money mm-hmm. and somebody who's very successful. Yep. And he wants to pick that guy's brain. Mm-hmm. And he wants to and he wants to go out. He says, he says, I want to go out to dinner. And he says, in that scenario, most often that person would say, but I'm expecting you to pick up the check. But the reality of it is, if that person just thought, hold on. I got two hours with dinner with this guy, and it's gonna maybe cost me a hundred bucks. That's an investment that I'm gonna make that's gonna mm-hmm. last me forever. Right? Totally. It's the same way we think about spending money on books, right? Mm-hmm. People, well, I, you know, it's what's it's twelve ninety nine. Like mm-hmm. it's the same. It's, it's less, the same money. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And it, that's a scarcity mindset versus saying, uh, from an abundance standpoint, if I learn this lesson, if I pick right, if I pick the right book or the pick the right mentor and I invest something in there, what will the return be, Mm -hmm. right? It's this long-term view. It's really important to have this abundant mindset. It's easy, you know, because of evolution uh, for us to default into the scarcity mindset because we've evolved during times of great scarcity, right? And in terms of, you know, if I give away this food to DG, if I give him this salad over here, I'm not going to have any salad for me, right? right? And there's no salad to get out there. We live in a time of, of abundance, crazy abundance right now. And so... Right now is the time that you need to fight that 
uh, that evolutionary based kind of like um, uh, you know reflex and focus on abundance. I had an example of this come up as somebody sent me a message and said, "Hey." DG, I, I'm a fan. I, I, I like what you have to say about marketing, and mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. interested in if you would take me on as as a mentor. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I said this happens a lot, which is like, I don't. That's awesome. crazy, yeah. right? Awesome. But um, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna try something. Mm-hmm. I said, sure, um, sure. I offer paid mentoring services, yeah. and here's how much it costs. And he said, oh, I was just hoping I could like pick your brain over over coffee sometime. I'm yeah. like. You know, it's not like I said it's going to be ten grand for an hour, but mm-hmm. like that—that that to me is is the test: is how bad do you want it? Are totally. you willing to invest? And it's the little things. Like mm-hmm. I used to not buy anything, mm-hmm. and now if you send me a book on Amazon, buy it. If you send me a yeah. book on Audible, I buy it. You tell me about this other thing that I can't mention here, I buy yeah, it. Yeah, right? Don't tell me. And I think it's that—it's that mindset that you, then you're sitting on this wealth of knowledge that mm-hmm. you're going to tap into, and instead of thinking about like, well, that means I can't do this thing. Mm-hmm. I think that's been a huge change. You know what sure. I've never met before? What? I've never met a person who's gone broke buying books. <laughs> I haven't met that person yet. That is um, that. Have you met that one? No. I'm looking. Please write that in. That sounds like a Warren Buffett quote. Yeah, that sounds like a Warren write Buffett, in. Charlie. I've never original. met. Wow. Please write in. Uh, send me an email. If you are yeah. that person who has gone broke yeah. because you've got too many books <laughs> that you have me, paid too much for knowledge. Me, Todd. Me, me, Todd. Todd used to have a house and now yes. he lives on the street because he bought. <laughs> he bought too he many. Spent books. all his money on books. No, I haven't met that person. Right. So please write in if you are that person. What's my point? My point is that uh, if you invest in something like that, even though you have the scarcity mindset of not having enough money, uh, the truth is that you're not gonna you're not gonna go broke buying books. Mm-hmm. If you le- if you read those books, you apply the lessons that you're learning in there into what you want to do. That's not what you're going to go broke from. Love so it. Th- don't worry about that. Worry so about going broke from uh, from your Starbucks addiction yeah. or, uh, or, or the other stuff. Or something. All yeah. the other stuff sure. that DG buys. Yeah, everything. Smoothies, sneakers. You yeah, can green live without smoothies, all that stuff. You can $15 make them on your own. I made my own this morning. It was, it was lovely. Yeah. Um, all right, so that that's, that's like a learning mm-hmm. mindset. I want to bring this whole thing back to the beginning, which is like, we're about to start on some big, crazy project. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think that, I think if we want to be just like everybody else, it's easy to be like, oh, that seems like too much work, so mm-hmm. we're just going to do it this way. Yep. Right? Where I think that the suspend disbelief is that that is the mindset of like, yeah, it's never been done before. Mm-hmm. That's why That's we're awesome. going to do it. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I have the growth mindset. I want more projects. Growth more mindset. <laughs> DC has the ultimate yeah, yeah. growth Unlimited. Mindset. mindset. If okay. Salesforce Tower is a hundred thousand million feet tall, Drift Tower will be. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, that plus however plus five plus a boat. Yeah, yeah. Off of it. <laughs> off of it. Anyway, Let's go. What are, are you reading anything right now? I'm reading so many things, learning? but I finished uh, Make Time, which uh, yeah. I wrote about in our. We have an internal a Sunday night newsletter that I started. Yeah. Plus, we have an external. Uh, a Sunday night newsletter, which that I love. Reminded me of last week's episode, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've been running into uh, Hambissa in the kitchen a lot. Oh, really? And I said, DC made up a new nickname for you yeah. called Ham. Ham Money. And he goes, no, some people call me that. See? That's what I said. I knew it. Because his last name is Goso, and yeah. so he says his nickname is Goso Ham. And I said, damn. Ooh, that's good. That's Goso good. Ham. That's pretty good. Uh, what's up, Goso Ham? So you, so, so you finished Make Time. Yeah, I wrote about it. I have an internal drift only newsletter mm. kind of reflect and I wrote about this book make time I also wrote which is a good book it's written by two guys who wrote sprint ex googlers uh, enjoyed that book so if you want to be more effective take a look at that book I also mentioned some other books to help you on and didn't more you effective. speak of making time yeah didn't you blow up your calendar recently in which way I think oh, you yeah. started over. Yeah, I started over. So I went, you know, email you, bankrupt. You made a comment to over. me. Other, you made a comment to me the other day. You're like, I don't think I've sat at my desk for this long. And yeah, in, yeah, in I had years. sat at I sat at my desk. I sit next to the DG for I don't know, two hours, three hours, and I was like, I was it was weird. I was like, it's a lot of time. <laughs> I haven't sat here this long. What am I supposed to do? Because uh, I've been in just a ton of meetings, and so I've been putting into place the stuff for make time. Uh, basically clearing out my calendar. I've got an email in the control, have started to get my calendar in the control. There's a l- couple other books that I, I kind of recommended in there. We went back to the classic Stephen Covey. I'm rereading this book actually what? for the umpteenth time. The uh, Seven Habits. 
You're rereading oh, that effective. right now? Yeah. Really? Highly effective people. Highly recommended. That Actually, that quote that I sent you this morning, yeah. uh, two of them, was from that book. I was trying to figure out what was that from. Yeah. That, uh, so pick that book up if you haven't read it. Timeless classic. Why did you pick it? Was it just on the shelf? You're like, oh. Because um, we were talking internally about Big Rocks. And, uh, and I wrote on, in this newsletter up Big Rocks, and I said Big Rocks is a concept, you know, that we talk about it from the book The One Thing, but it originally came from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Have you read that book yet, DG? No? Oh, my goodness. We'll give him the printout. That explains it. The printout. Yeah, we'll give you that. Um, so anyway, we'll get him a copy of that book. Rereading that book right now, and then I got a couple others. You know what book I just finished? Audio book? What book? A little book by someone called You God. Oh, you um, did? Really? Oh, yeah, I read wow. that book. You God, if you don't know, shame on you. Yeah. You God is one of the members of the Wu Tang Wu Tang clan. clan. And he wrote a book of, uh, what was it? Uh, entering the, entering the, the Wu Tang, right? I believe that's the title. It was good? Great book. Yeah, I listened to it. He read it. It was awesome. Should I listen to it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's fun. Old New York. What are you style. reading now? Um,. I just finished an audio book. Okay. That's top secret. Okay, top secret. I can't share that one. Uh, but I'm I'm going deep. You you got me all these uh, Roy Williams Wizard of Ads books. Yeah, I see I'm that. About Sorry. to finish the first one. Yeah. I'm a little bit more neurotic than you are. I need to read. There's three, and they come in a series. I and you're sending. I was so screwed up because you're sending me pick, and they're all the chapters are numbered, mm. and so you're sending me like chapter 31, mm. and I go to my book 31, and it's different. So yeah. I'm reading them in order. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to Roy Williams in, in February. I'm Ooh. officially booked. All right. Uh, and uh, I'm also reading. I'm also reading a. I'm reading two books at night because uh-huh. I, I can't read the work stuff at night because no, it don't. just goes off. So That's somebody got us a, a loyal seeking wisdom listener got us this book about Michael Lombardi and, and Bill Belichick. I'm reading that book. Salute. You know who you are. <laughs> and I'm reading a book called Sons and Soldiers, which is a, a crazy true story. I think it's going to be the next Unbroken, which is about World War II oh, and a that. bunch of. German uh, German people who escaped Germany and then came back as a U.S. Uh, Army member to fight Hitler. It's a crazy, who is crazy this? This story. Is, this is DG? You got to just, I'm, this is who I am. This what? is who I am. It feels amazing. It feels amazing. Since when? It feels amazing. I'm learning some stuff. You know? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. If you're amazed by Check this, it out. please li- leave us a little, if you enjoyed you know this, what? if you want to support us. Please little, leave a little six star review. I think you're, because we. I said to you, I said G, nobody has shouted G two out in the comments. No, yet. We're, we've been I getting think, some. G2. I think we need a more clear call to action. I said, no. I said, tell G. This is a call to action might be tell G two he needs to read Seven Habits. Okay, yes. Please tell. Leave a six star review in and say G two. That's the letter G, the number two. You have to read the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Done. Uh, in order to up your game. Yes. Signed, loyal, <laughs> seeking wisdom, uh, member, community member. And we had some exciting news today uh, that we launched on the blog. Before we go, we're launching a new podcast in this feed. You'll be starting to see growth. It's hashtag growth podcast yeah. uh, that you'll be seeing in here. It's all about growth marketing. And uh, I think you guys will like it. Growth and is going to be a good one. Good one. And the build podcast that you've been listening to this on this feed has now moved, graduated, and has become its own feed in the uh, wherever you get podcasts. Harvard so Business School grad, Olympian, Olympia. own podcast. Yeah, Shout Maggie Crowley. Maggie. Running, uh, so if you know anyone in product, you like building product, you want to hear about the future of product, subscribe to Build by Seeking Wisdom wherever you subscribe to these to hear podcasts. See ya. See ya. See ya.